Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Two weeks ago on Ash Wednesday, we talked about fasting. That fasting is self-denial, saying no, abstaining from, but by God's design, the abstaining from, the saying no, is for the sake of a for, or a saying yes to something. Well, basically tonight, we have the opportunity to talk about that half of it, as we talk about the discipline of giving, that indeed the saying no, the from, opens the door then to say yes. It opens the door for the for, to indeed give, to give in Christ's name for the glory of God, for our own growth in the faith, for the benefit of others. Indeed, if we're giving up something for Lent, that something costs money, well now we have this money. What am I going to use that money for? How can this money benefit someone else? else. Or maybe you give up the screen time for Lent. Now you have this gift of time. How do you steward and manage this gift of time for the benefit of others? For indeed, not just during Lent, but indeed the Christian life is to be one of self-denial, of self-control. It's a fruit of the Spirit of indeed saying no to self, which then opens the opportunity to give. To give of our time and treasure and talent for the benefit of others. Now we're calling this discipline of Lent giving. And that's not wrong but it really doesn't capture all that we're focusing on tonight. Because when Jesus teaches us about giving, in the reading from Matthew chapter 6, and almost all our English translations use the word giving, but that's actually not the Greek word. It's not the Greek word for giving. The Greek word that Jesus uses, and he uses it three times just in a couple of verses, actually is the Greek word that means do mercy. That really broadens and gives a much fuller and richer meaning to what we're talking about today. That indeed Christian giving is doing mercy. Showing mercy to others. So let me again read to you the words of Jesus, but with the more literal translation here of, of how it would read in the Greek. So this is our Lord speaking. When you do mercy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you do mercy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your mercy doing may be done in secret. Doing mercy. That's what we're called to do. Again, I think there's much more to, to latch on there, isn't there, than just the word giving. I think when we hear the word giving, I think we do kind of think money, right? We think dollars and cents primarily. And certainly doing mercy can involve dollars and cents and money helping those that may have financial need. But doing mercy. A powerful thought. That indeed God calls us as his baptized people to be doers of mercy. To be kind and compassionate and gracious and merciful 
to others. And not only is it helpful, again, to go back to the original Greek and realize Jesus here is talking about just not giving in terms of money, but doing mercy to those who are in need. Because that mercy word is always going to connect us to Christ and the cross. Last week, Pastor Patterson led us through that discipline of repentance. We heard the tax collector's prayer, didn't we? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that's how our Lord relates to us. He is our merciful God. He doesn't give us what we deserve. No, He's gracious to us, always giving us gifts that we haven't earned or deserved. So as those who are each and every day on the receiving end of His mercy, now we, the power of His Holy Spirit, are the merciful ones. The ones that now get to do mercy as He does mercy. That's what we hear about in our, in our first reading for tonight. That reading, Paul is urging, almost could say begging, the Christians at Corinth to provide support for their brothers and sisters in Christ. A hundred, hundreds of miles away, in and around Jerusalem, there was a terrible famine in and around Jerusalem. Paul is encouraging the Christians at Corinth. Probably didn't even know any of the believers, hardly any of them, in and around Jerusalem. And yet we're encouraging them to respond in mercy because of the fact that they were struggling with the famine. And when you listen, the reason Paul gives why the Christians in Corinth should do mercy and practice mercy Paul grounds it and he founds it in the mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus. Listen to what Paul writes. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. But Jesus does does for you. He denies himself for you. He becomes poor for you. In his mercy, he lays down his life for you. So that now you are rich. Eternally rich. Richer than all the money in the world. Rich with forgiveness and life and salvation. So the prayer of faith is the prayer for mercy. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that prayer for mercy is one that is always going to be answered favorably. For merciful is who our God is. Mercy is the way that God relates to you and to me. Always giving us gifts that we don't deserve. We see that all throughout Jesus' earthly life, don't we? When God himself takes on human flesh and dwells among us, his ministry was one of mercy. Of going to the sick, to those who were trapped in bondage to sin and Satan, to those who were grieving, to those who were the outcast, to those who were regarded as the sinners. And unworthy of God's love and mercy. Jesus had mercy on them. 
gave and he forgave. He helped, he healed, he saved, he strengthened. Renewed. He's done it for you. He does it every day for you and for me. Who he is, what he gives. Then he invites us to be mercy. To be merciful as he is merciful. Again, not to draw attention to ourselves, not for our own glory, not to toot our own horn. Literally what he says, right? Okay. Sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do. Said, Jesus says, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you are doing mercy. See, that's how doing mercy happens. When Jesus saw someone that needed mercy, that needed his care and compassion. We see it again and again in the Gospels. What does he do? He does mercy. You have the Spirit of Christ within you who empowers you for those acts and those works of mercy. To live mercifully, to do mercy. Now sometimes to do mercy... Is it going to involve a change in plans? Is it going to be inconvenient at times? Yes. Is it going to be an interruption to maybe what you were doing at a given moment? Could very well be. Someone needs mercy, we do mercy. Even if it involves a change in plans. Even if an interruption to what we were doing. An inconvenience. It's a God-given inconvenience. It's a God-given interruption. It's a God-given change of plans. God working through us. Be doers of mercy. To be the voice and the hands and the feet of Christ at that moment. Someone who has a need. It's true. There are times when our doing of mercy has to be spontaneous. When it does involve a change of plans, an interruption. Sometimes our doing of mercy is to a complete stranger. How unexpected it was. But most often our doing of mercy is very deliberate. It's done as stewards, as managers of the mercy and the grace and the gifts of God that we've been given. And when we think about the discipline of giving or doing mercy like we're doing tonight, it's not as if the season of Lent is the only time we're supposed to give or do merciful things. So this brings us into the theme of Lent of self-examination. That Lent should be this time. Yes, we reflect on our God's doing of mercy to us. All the gifts and the blessings we've received, the talents, the abilities He's given to us, the passions that we have, the interests that we have. Now how can I use these gifts and blessings to be a doer of mercy in Christ's name? 
How can I steward what the Lord has given me? If you have that talent, if you have that ability, if you have that passion to serve or to give in a certain way, pursue it! A gift from God in His mercy. Maybe right now you're busy raising kids. That consumes your day and your time. That's wonderful. Because your kids, right now that's your calling. That's where you're going to focus your mercy doing. There are others of us that are in a different season of life. Maybe have more time. How do we steward that gift of time? How do we manage that time? that we can be doers of mercy. Volunteering here at church or maybe for some other charity. Maybe you're like Leo and you only have 71 cents. So you don't have much to steward there. But often our Lord gives us a little bit more than 71 cents. Usually not only gives us what we need, but more than what we need. So that with our dollars and cents, even with the quarters that ring in the collection plate, we can use those gifts as well to be doers of mercy. All with the cross all with our merciful Lord, front and center. Because you see, our mercy doing pales the mercy of the Lord. His mercy endures forever. Yet this mercy that's really what the Christian life is. Christian life is all about mercy. Daily receiving the mercies of our God. Those free and unearned gifts, the forgiveness of our sins, for we sin daily. We don't deserve mercy, but wrath and condemnation. Daily receiving the mercies of our Lord because the scripture says his mercies are new every morning. And then doing mercy. Serving others, loving others. Using the gifts that we have been given. Not for our own glory. Not to toot our own horn. For the glory of God. Mercy. In Christ's name. Amen. We continue with the offering and the singing of the hymn stanza that's printed in the bulletin.